Hello everyone and welcome back to the series where I play the wrong musical genre over top of another genre. Today we're going to be mixing it up with country music. And no, I am not going to wear this hat the entire video. Before we get into it, I want to quickly remind you that my new course is out now. I've talked about it a fair bit already, so here's a quick rundown. It's aimed at intermediate guitarists focusing on advanced chords and modes. It's half off this first month with promo code EARLYBIRD. You can buy it bundled together with my first course and get them both half off with that same promo code. It's available over www.samuraiguitartheory.com. I said I was going to keep it quick, on to the fun stuff. Before we start mixing and mashing genres, let's talk a little bit about country. A style of music that at its best can be incredible and at its worst can be insufferable. When I think about country, a couple images come to mind, pickup trucks, painted on blue jeans, generic and tasteless American beers, that kind of thing. When I think about soloing over top of country, one thing comes to mind, chicken picking the old telly. Here's what that sounds like. <laughs> It's one of my favorite styles to play in, the bends, the double stops, the hybrid picking, gotta love it. But from here on, things are going to get a little bit strange. The first wrong genre I'm going to play over top of country is psychedelic classic rock. Back in the late 60s, there were some interesting things going on in the world of music. One of my favorite things from this era were those long tripped out guitar solos. For tone, I'm thinking Les Paul, Fuzz, and of course the Univibe, or even better, an actual spinning speaker. Come along with me, my friends, on a mystical musical journey that should sound a little bit like San Francisco and a bit like Texas. My thoughts, that was surprisingly fun. If there's a psychedelic Western band out there looking for a new guitarist, hit me up, buckaroo. Next up, let me paint a little picture for you. The year is 1840, and the 620 train to Cody, Wyoming was just robbed by local bandits. You are the local sheriff, and you're in charge with tracking down Calamity Joe and his band of no-gooders. The soundtrack to your grand adventure would go a little something like this. I should also add that in this scenario, you are an 8-bit character from an Atari game. First of all, you're probably wondering what's up with this wackadoodle guitar. If you missed the video that I did on this, I'll put a link to that in the description. Second of all, 80s meets Wild West kind of reminds me of Back to the Future 3. And just like Back to the Future 3, it wasn't all that great. Next up, I'm going to mash up bluegrass and- Now hang on a second there, partner. First spaghetti western music and now bluegrass? I thought this was a video about country music. Okay, pal, listen, genres are a finicky thing and so is the YouTube algorithm. If I name this video soloing in the wrong genre over genres that loosely fit underneath the Americana umbrella, it doesn't really have the same mass appeal, does it? So take this video for what it is, a stupid way to waste a couple minutes, not a dissertation on country music. Sorry about that. As I was saying, I'm now gonna be mashing up bluegrass with the genre known as talk boxing which isn't so much a genre as it is a guitar device. This thing routes my guitar signal through a tube, allowing me to put this in my mouth and speak with my guitar. Hello, everyone. It's used in funk, rock, pop, just about everything. I've never heard it used in bluegrass. Let's see how this goes. <laughs> It 
adds an interesting dimension, but I also understand why the talk box isn't used in bluegrass. Maybe we'll have more luck with our next mashup, and for that, I'm gonna combine two genres that have very little in common, Indian music and pop country. Let me tell you what I know about traditional Indian music. Very little, but I've enjoyed it when I've heard it. Let me tell you what I know about pop country music. Quite a lot, and I haven't particularly enjoyed it when I've heard it. I'm gonna use the Dan Electro Sitaratar to hopefully get me somewhere within that realm. Wish me luck. <laughs> You know, in some strange way, that kind of worked, though I don't see Florida Georgia Line rebranding as Florida Gujarat Line anytime soon. And last for today, I'm going to attempt some funky slap bass over top of Outlaw Country. Now, just be warned, I don't have the most amazing slapping skills, but I will give this my absolute best. I mean, come on, what isn't made better with some slap bass? I quite enjoyed smacking around the old forest string, and I quite like that backing track too. A very nice time was had by me while I created that recording. Please gently click that like button if you enjoyed it too. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it, soloing and slapping the bass over top of country and its various related styles of music. Remember, my course Samurai Guitar Theory Beyond the Basics is now available. This is an intermediate class aimed at the guitarists looking to take their understanding of music theory to the next level. In it, I do a deep dive into modes, their practical applications, and how we can use them. I also look at advanced chords and break them down so you will never again find a chord that you don't know how to play. This initial sale is coming to a close. You can save 50% with promo code EARLYBIRD, or you can buy it bundled together with my first course, The Rudiments, getting them both for half off with that same promo code. I'll put up links to that in the description, or you can find it over at www.samuraiguitartheory.com. Thank you all for watching. If you wanna watch another video like this one, you can hit that link up there. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button and stay tuned to regular musical content. If you enjoyed this video, let me know by leaving me a comment and hitting that like button. Until next time, I'm Sam Ray Guitarist. Thank you for watching. I'll see you again soon.